Good morning. Pastor Sean here. Today is Saturday, January 20th, and this is your morning prayer. So let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alrighty, Acts, back into Acts today. Acts chapters uh, 15 and 16. Have a, a couple interesting things going on here today, in that... Um, we, we began by hearing about um, how some some of the people, some of the Christians, um, those uh, who had belonged to the party of the Pharisees, so you had um, you know some ex-Pharisees now in the in, in the church here. Um, well, actually, you had some ex-Pharisees in the church. You also just had Pharisees who were um, not quite in the church, but still coming and, and dealing with the Christians because... You know, the, the, the church, the Christian church was not like all of a sudden it pops up and is an immediate split and a completely separate entity. Um, it is it is coming about as this kind of natural outgrowth of of the Jewish faith, because um, that's how they that's how they saw it. I mean, Jesus was the culmination of the Jewish scriptures. I mean, he was the, the savior. He was the Messiah. He, he was the one promise to them. And so um, this is why, you know, when, when the, the, the apostles are doing a lot of their preaching, they're doing it in the synagogues. Um, so it's, it's, there's a lot of kind of fluidity going on here. And so this, this men of the party of the Pharisees um, were like, okay, well, we, we see that you're converting Gentiles. Okay, but <laughs> if you're going to convert these Gentiles, you need to circumcise them. They have to be circumcised and they have to follow the law uh, the laws of Moses. So um, basically, like that's it's fine and well if you want to baptize them and and make them Christians, but they've if they're going to you know they've they've got to keep the old covenant too. Now, obviously, this is not going to work out well. Um, so the 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 apostles get together, they discuss it, um, they they seek out God's guidance in uh, in this matter. They go to scriptures, uh, so they do everything that they're supposed to do. You know, they don't just blow them off. They don't shoot from the hip. They they take this seriously and they consult God's word. They consult God to for for the direction in this. Because you got to remember that this is this they're treading new territory here, right? This is a, a new thing that that God has has done and is doing. So they don't want to, you know, just kind of go it on their own. So um, they 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 figure out that like, well, you know, there, there's nothing that compels. We, we should not be putting this yoke on the Gentiles um, that they, they do not need to be circumcised. They do not need to adhere to all of the requirements of this old covenant because here Jesus brings this new one. However. They do say this, so they send a letter back to the um, to the Christians who, who need to hear this, and they say, you know what, you don't need to be circumcised, which I'm sure the guys drew a great breath of relief there. Um, but they said, okay, don't don't worry about that. Don't worry when they say be circumcised, laws of Moses. Don't worry about it. Except uh, we do ask you to abstain from food sacrificed to idols, um, from uh, food that's been strangled or or the blood. Um, so consuming that and also to avoid sexual morality. Now you might kind of look at that and be, well, that's kind of peculiar. I mean, it, aren't they just setting laws? You know, I mean, the whole thing was like, well, no, the, the circumcision is, is a work of the law. The, the laws of Moses works of the law. The gospel frees us from the, the necessity of that. So then why are the apostles putting these laws upon them? Um, which you could look at avoid sexual immorality and say, well, that's not, really putting a new law on them. That's just goes part and parcel with, you know, loving God and loving your neighbor, you know, the, the 10 commandments, but the, the food sacrifice from idols and, and what has been strangled in blood might, might throw a little like, well, Hmm, interesting. And I think to, to really see what's going on there is you continue reading and see when Paul gets, um, finds Timothy and is introduced to Timothy. And he, he says, okay, I want, I want to take Timothy with me. Okay, I want Timothy to accompany me as we go around. But what does he have? Tim what does he? What does he do to Timothy? He circumcises him. 
was like, whoa, 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 wait a second. Paul was just saying <laughs> he was just upset because people were suggesting that the Gentiles should be circumcised. Then he comes to Timothy and says he must be circumcised. Why is that? Uh, we do get the detail that um, Timothy's mom is uh, is Jewish and his dad is a Greek. So kind of a, a mixed household there. So what's going on here? Well, um, yeah, in, in, in the freedom of Christ, the Gentiles don't need to be circumcised. Um, they, they can eat food sacrificed to idols. They can eat what has been strangled. Um, you know, they, they, they can do these things. However, um, based on what was going on in that time, what they were dealing with, um, th there are times when we constrain our freedom uh, because the situation needs it. And we see that. So we, we don't know exactly, you know, what the, the food sacrifice, the idols, uh, what has been strangled and, and the blood thing. We don't know exactly um, what that had to do with what they were experiencing or faced with at that moment. But with Timothy, we can begin to see it where, you know, why would Paul, who was just upset about the circumcision party, now circumcising Timothy? Um, because he's looking at it like, okay, what, what, what's going to be the best for Timothy as he's going around and dealing with all these situations that I'm dealing with? And, you know, especially as the circumcision party kind of hounds Paul a lot and gives him a lot of grief. Well, he's going to spare Timothy from a great deal of grief, grief by having him circumcised. Circumcision doesn't do anything for Timothy. It does not, um, you know, give him any extra brownie points. It does not mean he's a special uh, Christian or, or whatever. It's just going to spare him from having to deal with some of this stuff. And we'll, we'll just, based on what's going on, it's like, you know what? It's Circumcision is not a necessity for you, Timothy, but this is going to, in the long run, be a lot better for you uh, by doing this. Um, and so that makes a lot more sense than when we go back and look like, well, why, why are these extra things being placed upon the Gentiles? Um, and Paul will, will talk about this in, in his epistles in, in greater detail, especially with the food sacrificed uh, to idols, where he'll, he'll say, like, look, we know that food sacrificed to idols is no big deal because idols are nothing. It doesn't matter. You can eat the food. Eat the food. Fine. Great. Go for it. However... <laughs> If there is a weaker brother in Christ, brother or sister in Christ, who, who sees you eating food sacrificed to idols, and they start to have a crisis of faith because they still think that that's a big deal. And, and if they are to see you doing that, which causes them to stumble in their faith, guess what? You don't get to eat food sacrificed to idols anymore. You need to, to give up that freedom for however long in order to keep that weaker brother or sister from stumbling. So there, there are many times when, you know, we, we acknowledge we have freedom in Christ to do many things, but it's not always a good thing that we do those things. Um, you know, if, if you're, it's, I mean, it's almost kind of a common sense kind of thing. Like, um, you know, you have the freedom to drink alcohol. Sure. But if you're going to take out your, your friend who is a recovering alcoholic are you going to take them to a bar and drink right in front of them? No. I mean, unless they say it's okay and they have no problem with it, I suppose, that's then that's fine. But, I mean, if they're really struggling, you're not going to do it. Why? I mean, you can. You don't have a problem with alcohol, right? Well, you don't because you love them, because you don't want to damage them, because you don't want to tempt them. So what we see going on here and, and the difference between Paul saying in one hand, no Gentiles don't be circumcised and then taking Timothy and circumcising him is because it's like, yes, all things, this, 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 this is all kind of, you know, you don't need to be circumcised, but for this, for this task that I'm bringing you along for, it is better for you to be circumcised. Um, so that is where we, we, we find that understanding. Um, the, the other thing might be, and I've heard this um, from certain just uh, certain things. Uh, usually it's, it's um, like people arguing online about stuff and coming up with examples from scripture. And it's the uh, slave girl with a spirit of divination and, and people are very confused about, you know, why, why is, why do they, why does Paul um, cast this spirit out of her? Because she seems to be doing nothing wrong. I mean, she's following them and she's saying, these men are servants of the most high God who proclaim to you the way of salvation. Seems like a good thing, right? 
Um, but this annoys Paul. After several days, it annoys Paul, and he casts the demon out, which then upsets her owners because they were using this slave girl and her her spirit of divination to profit, to make money. So the the confusing thing is like, well, what 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 is the what is the deal there? Um, and somehow um, it works out. The argument works out where Paul is actually does something unloving by by casting out this spirit. It's not really that hard to see what's going on here. It's just that she's got a spirit of divination. She doesn't have a spirit of God. She has a spirit of divination. So this is an evil spirit, no matter what. Um, the fact that she points out the truth that, that these men are servants of the most high God who proclaim the way to salvation. Yeah, that's absolutely true. But you know what? The demons say true things. When Jesus was casting out demons, they would say, Oh, I know who you are. You are the son of the most high God. True. Absolutely true. And what did Jesus say? Silence. <laughs> don't, don't speak. Um, you know, and, and there's, we can get into that. Well, we don't have time for that this morning. Um, but you know, the, the reason, well, because, well, when, when demons speak, even when they're speaking true things, their goal, their aim is to deceive. And if you can deceive with the truth, awesome. Um, so that that's their, that's always their goal. So this, this, slave girl with a spirit of divination while she's saying true things clearly was doing something and, and doing what she was doing was getting in the way of, of Paul and Silas's mission. So he casts out the demon beside or the spirit besides the fact that, you know, the, the slave owners are, are doing this just to make money and using the slave girl to essentially using this, this evil spirit, whatever it is to profit. So not a lot of good stuff is going on there. Um, so there's, there's nothing untoward that Paul does here. Uh, it actually goes quite well in line with the mission. <laughs> so don't, don't know what to tell you there. All right. Well, that's about it for us this morning. That's Acts chapter 15 and 16. Let us pray. I thank you, my heavenly father, through Jesus Christ, your dear son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Blessings to you on this Saturday. Hope you have a great day. Hope you have a great weekend. And uh, I will see you Monday. <laughs> so until then, peace be with you.